Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, people of God, saints of God, praise the Lord, my family, uh, my Facebook family, my YouTube family, my Tumblr family, SoundCloud family, blessings to you all. Thank you for joining me today for my hour broadcast on uh, Spreaker. And I just want to thank Spreaker and the Spreaker community uh, for the for the opportunity to that they have presented to ministers and all people, but uh, ministers exa- uh, especially, to to get their message out, to to convey the truths that God has has burning within them, and I just really thank you for that because it has allowed me to uh, to branch out and people can hear the truth that God has placed. Uh, in my innermost being but today I'm dealing with example number two concerning the Holy Ghost baptism I dealt with uh, you remember now this is still the theme this is still the theme of the prophecy of the Holy Ghost baptism the purpose of the Holy Ghost baptism and the power of the Holy Ghost baptism this is what I would like to call a supplement uh, to the purpose or the power uh, of the baptism of the Holy Ghost because I chose uh, the Spirit of God just kind of just kind of led me to be a little bit more clearer scripturally and doctrinally to show the doctrinal soundness of the Holy Ghost baptism and when you hear Uh, about speaking in tongues or you hear a preacher say the Holy Ghost baptism what does it mean and 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 what does the Word of God has to say about it and I encourage every believer to always do not reject the preaching of a preacher uh, if he's coming from the Bible but I do encourage you to be like those Paul said uh, in Acts 17 uh, the children of Berea uh, who went and they searched the scriptures uh, to see if the thing be so so I always encourage believers, you know, search the scriptures to see if what the man of God or woman of God, uh, if what they're saying to you, uh, is it truth? And uh, I want to deal with a couple of scriptures. Like I said, uh, the purpose of this teaching was to show, is to show uh, the distinction of what it means to be saved and what it means to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again, what it means to be saved and what it means to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we must go to the, the teachings of the master, if you would, the messenger, because the new covenant is a, is a new contract, if you would, that God has made with mankind. And the messenger of this covenant is none, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself and the first trusted messengers of this covenant is the apostles so if we want to know what Jesus taught and what the apostles taught we must go to the gospels and we must read uh, the book of Acts and the letters will explain how to live a Christian life so that being said let us go if you would turn with me to Mark chapter 16 if you would if you want to go ahead on if you want to go ahead and open your Bibles I'll be dealing with these chapters Mark 16, 15, and 16, Luke 24, 47, 48, and 49, Acts chapter 2, 38, Acts chapter 8, 5 through 20. Mark 16, 15, and 16, Luke 24, 47 through 49, Acts chapter 2, 38 through 39, and Acts chapter 8, 5, verses 5 through verses 20. So let us go to the word of God. And Jesus said unto them, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And whosoever he that believeth, and is baptized, shall be saved. He that believeth, and is baptized, shall be saved. But he that believeth not, shall be damned now listen at what jesus said is the requirement to be saved it's come out of the lord jesus himself go ye into all the world listen now first preach 
preach the gospel to every creature of creation. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Jesus set the parameters or the doctrine or the teaching of what it means to, to be saved. In Luke chapter 24, listen at what Jesus says uh, beginning at verse 47. And he says, I'm um, going to go to verse 46 to kind of give context to the text. And he says, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoove, behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Back to verse 46. Listen to what he says. And said unto them. Thus it is written. And thus it behoved Christ to suffer. And to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance. And remission of sins. Should be preached in his name. Among all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things now let us put let me put mark 16 15 and 16 together with luke chapter 24 when these writers are writing this is not a contradiction it is a fulfillment of the total gospel message and what it means in mark 16 jesus jesus is telling them go ye into all the world and preach uh, uh, to preach the gospel to every creature and he that it believeth and is baptized shall be saved and Luke chapter 24 he says in verse, verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem so what is the gospel the gospel is the repentance and the remission of sins is is, is preached in the name of Jesus uh, because he suffered for mankind's sin. So when you hear someone preaching and they're preaching the message of repentance and remission of sins in Jesus name, that's what it means when you are baptized. That's what it means to be saved. Did you get that? The, the gospel message is the repentance and the remission of sins that is preached in Jesus name is the qualification to be saved. Now let us go to Acts chapter 2 and see how the Apostle Peter brought it all together under the revelation of the Holy Ghost, how he connected the dots and tied in the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now we know in our last teaching, well, when I dealt with the Holy Ghost baptism in Acts chapter 2, uh, we see that the disciples them were already baptized and they were already saved. They were already children of God. They was already walking with the Christ and Christ had already called them the children of God and he called, told them to address God as Father. Now let us see how this is working. Now the first group that has received the Holy Ghost baptism is the disciples that walk with Jesus. Now let us go to the second uh, 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 preaching of Peter. Well, it's the same preaching from Acts chapter two, verses one through four, uh, one through uh, forty-seven. But I just want to glean out, if you would, and get handfuls of purpose of how Peter preached this repentance and remission of sins to be preached in Jesus' name. In Acts chapter two, beginning at verse thirty-seven. It says, now when they heard this, after Peter then did all the preaching about the tongues and, and, and Jesus, uh, uh, God sent Jesus to the fathers. You read the rest of all of Acts chapter 2 and it'll bring it all together for you. Now when they heard this, they, they were pricked in their heart, the Holy Ghost convicted them, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, this now, then Peter said unto them, they've asked him what asked him what must we do in order to be saved now listen at what he tells them then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins now you see what you see what Peter is doing he's drawing back from when Jesus told them before he ascended that repentance and re, uh, that, yeah, that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in my name beginning at Jerusalem 
Remember, the Holy Ghost fell on the temp at the temple in Jerusalem where Jesus told them not to leave Jerusalem. So when they asked Peter, what shall we do? You see Peter staying in context, in, in context with Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, Luke 24, 45, 46, and 47. He has preached the gospel and they asked him, what must we do? Jesus already told them what must be done. And Peter said, repent. The first thing to do is you have to repent and you have to be baptized now in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus said that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name. So he, that's why you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And now listen, say, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now listen at what he does. He lays the condition after he's heard, after he's set up under the ministry of Jesus, he have laid the qualifications of what it means to be baptized, what, I mean what it means to be saved and what it means to uh, to have his sin, have one's sins remitted or forgiven him. He, he, he literally follow, follows the commands of Jesus Christ. Then he adds and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now he's talking about another dimension of the the plan of salvation and listen at what he says for the promise see he's back to the promise where we did in, in lesson one the promise of the Holy Ghost baptism he's saying and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise so he's telling us that the gift of the Holy Ghost or the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the promise or the prophecy that we studied earlier in our session in uh, in episode one uh, you can go and listen to it uh, the prophecy promise of the Holy Ghost baptism to kind of catch up with me if this is your first time listening at uh, the broadcast now let us go to the example that I want to lay our hat on in Acts chapter 8 and just bear with me as we read the word of God I just love the word of God as we read the word of God and as we begin to apply its truth in our lives in Acts chapter 8, kind of give a history of the text, uh, there was great persecution against the church now. God has been moving by his power. Uh, the Pharisees say they're about, they out to try to kill the apostles and there's just, just, just mayhem and chaos against the Christian believers. So now it says in Acts chapter 8 uh, that when per, uh, persecution rose uh, in the church that uh, uh, all the believers were scattered out. They were scattered out in different uh, areas. They, they had been scattered out of Jerusalem. This is the first beginning of the gospel going to every creature. Now in Acts chapter 8 verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed, and there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then lay they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now let us, let us, let us go back and glean, let, let us, let us glean uh, some gold and silver from the word of God. Uh, on the persecution of the church in Acts chapter 5, it says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, listen now, and he preached Christ unto them. 
Now, mind you, Philip came up under the apostles. He, yeah, 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 yeah. If you go to Acts chapter 6, you'll see that he was nominated by the congregation to be one of the deacons in the church. And, 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 and I, that's another teaching on, you know, deacons in the church. I'm going to deal with that. Uh, I pray that you still be with me when I do. It, it, it's going to enlighten you. But anyway, uh, he was a deacon among the church and God had activated him into the ministry of the evangelist. So he can't go called when you go to Acts chapter six, you'll see where it says that the disciples in Jerusalem multiplied greatly. From Acts chapter 2, when, 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 when the Holy Ghost first came down on the apostles, all the way to Acts chapter 8, you'll see scriptures that talks about how the, multi, how the disciples had multiplied, the apostles was multiplying disciples in Jerusalem. Philip being one of them disciples, he came up under the tutelage and the teaching of the 12 apostles. Now, <clears throat> now you see Philip going out preaching. So he preached Christ unto them. And it says, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying with love. See, this is how you know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached because miracles are going to follow it. I'm not on that. I'll deal with that when I get to the powerful evidence of the Holy Ghost. But it says, came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Now we see that he went and preached Christ. Why? Because Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is what he told the apostles. The apostles them preached in Jerusalem. The apostles them brought forth disciples. The apostles them taught Philip. He taught, they taught Philip how to preach Christ. They, now Philip has preached Christ and the Bible says in verse 12, I'm jumping down to verse 12, it says, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Now listen to what it says. When he when when Philip preached Christ, then it goes on down, it talks about how God began to do signs, wonders, and miracles. And it says, Now when they believed Philip, now listen to what he had been taught. When people believe, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12, when when Philip preached, when they when they believed. Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. Listen now, they were baptized, both men and women. They were, the people in Samaria were saved at that time. I can't say it more clearly. The word of God have shown it to you. Jesus told us what to do. He said, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. This is what he said in order to be saved. He preached that to the, he gave that to the apostles. The apostles them have given it to the to, to the disciples. Philip has gone out preaching and he has preached what he had been taught. And now you see the condition or the qualifications to be saved. You have to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, when he preached this, listen now, and they believed they were baptized. They were baptized. Let us go on down. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, the sorcerer, when he saw that 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 Philip, uh, 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 the miracles and the signs which God was doing with Philip, when he saw that, the Bible says he believed, and he were baptized. See it? You see it? You see it? Okay, now you got it. You know the condition to be saved. Don't let me tell you, you got to speak in tongues to be saved. You got to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ in order to be saved. And you need to be baptized. You need to immediately get baptized, okay? All right, if you listen at this broadcast and the Holy Ghost convicts you, you say, oh, I want to get saved. Okay, go get, go, uh, 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 repent of your sins. Mm -hmm. And if you, if, if another believer, if you can't get to a preacher, if another believer, you're right, go run you some water in the bathtub, get in the bathtub, tell the person to put you under and call the name of Jesus. Jesus and you'll be saved. That's what the condition is to be saved. Now listen to what it says. It says now, then Simon himself believed also and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles, listen now, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. See that when you believe and be baptized, you have received the word of God. You have not yet been baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's another dimension. You are saved. You are a child of God. See, 
The Bible says when the apostles never heard that Samaria had received, listen now, they had received the word of God. When you sit up under the preaching or the teaching, uh, uh, the preaching of Jesus Christ and you get saved, you have received the word of God in seed form. Now you have been born again. You have been rebirthed and you are a new created creature in Christ Jesus. It says now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, listen now, let the, let the text teach us, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now let, let the Bible talk. Now these apostles that walked with Jesus, they sat with Jesus. If they already knew that the people in Samaria had been baptized with the Holy Ghost, why would they come down and pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost? Come on now, talk to me. Why would they pray that these people in Samaria received the Holy Ghost if the apostles them already understood that you had the Holy Ghost when you repent and believe or when you when you are baptized and all the different doctrines that have come up after the book of Acts about what it means or what it means to be saved and what qualifies one to be saved. Did you see it? When the apostles them in Jerusalem, when they would come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Might receive it. Doesn't mean it's a guarantee you will receive it. Why? Because if you have not truly repented, and you'll see that with Simon, if you have not really truly repented and turned your heart towards God, you're really not saved. So the, the, uh, the apostles, one of the, one of the anointing of the apostle is he has a qualifying anointing. They qualify who, who they qualify uh, one's uh, true salvation experience. You'll see, it, you'll see it in a few minutes. Now listen to verse 16. It says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them. He hadn't fallen upon none of them. Listen now. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, you, you see the word of God? It said he, the Holy Ghost hadn't fallen upon them. The only thing that happened is that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember now, that's the qualification to be saved. Mark chapter 16, 15 and 16. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Luke chapter 24, 47, 45, 46 and 47. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in my name beginning in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 2, 37, 38. They were pricked to their heart. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter, standing up with the 11 apostles, said, repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see the plan now? You, you, you see, I, okay, you got it. You got it. I can move on now. Thank you, Lord. I see you're getting it now. You, you, you got it. See, all it takes sometimes is just to walk, take the time to walk through the scriptures and let the word of God teach us. The Bible is its own interpreter. Don't go get no commentary to interpret the Bible. I go get my Bible to interpret the commentary. Okay, thank you. Uh, for as yet, he was fallen upon none of them. He had fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on, of the hand, uh, laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now let me, let me, let me, let me clarify something right here. In this text, because I'm going to be true to the text, you don't see them speaking in tongues and you don't see the Bible covering that they spoke in tongues. But what did they saw? The Bible says when Simon saw, what did Simon see? What did he see? That the Holy Ghost was given. It says through the laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given. What possibly could he have seen? Some say, well, he saw joy. He couldn't have seen joy. He already saw joy because he saw that in Acts chapter 5, going back up a little bit around the, uh, around the ninth or the 10th verse when the Bible says there was great joy in the city when Philip came and preached the gospel. And so he already saw joy. Love. You can't see love because love got love is a process of time, boo-boo. We got to grow in the love. So he didn't see that. What did he see? He saw them speak with other tongues the bible talks about i i like to call it, it's called the law of continuity in other words uh the, the holy spirit did not allow the writers to go into detail about everything but he gave us enough to know from the other uh scriptures how to connect the dots uh, if we have any questions uh concerning a doctrine 
So we understand that when Simon saw through the laying on of the hands, now because the apostles come to pray to lay hands on them that they may receive the Holy Ghost. And the apostle, and when Simon saw through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. The Holy Ghost was given. Because remember now, they came to pray that they might receive the Holy Ghost. He wanted to offer them money. Then he said, now it was a power. Listen to what he said. He said, give me also this power that whomsoever I lay hands on, they may receive the Holy Ghost. What did he see that was such a phenomenon? It wasn't the miracles. Because he had already saw that with Simon. He had already saw that with Philip. The miracles he saw uh, was getting people saved and healed, delivered, lame, man walk, lame people walking and everything. The mighty miracle ministry. He saw them speaking in other tongues. That's what he seen. He saw them speaking in other tongues. Now, as you continue to go with me as I go through the examples, you'll see how that what it is when you receive the Holy Ghost. That's the evidence, that's the sign that he gives to you and to those around you to let you know that he have taken up residence within you. And that is to speak with other tongues. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you cause the hearer's heart, Lord, to be open. I thank you, Father, for, for the ears that will hear the truth and eyes that will see the revelation. I thank you, Lord. I give you all the honor. I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory in Jesus mighty name. Amen.